Uh, well, I, I was very heavy with sadness for uh, um, the departure of Jonah. Funnily enough, I, uh, like a lot of people, probably yourself included, I've got a bunch of friends. We meet three or four times a year to chew the fat like men do. Uh, as one of the old All Blacks from down this way, Norm Wilson once said to me, it, where men go to talk to things that men talk. So we were in the back bar of a pub in Wellington called The Backbencher, which has on its wall mm. um, um, little rugby statues. Uh, and they're about yay high, and there are three of them there. One is Colin Meads, one is Tana Umana, and one is Jonah Lomu. And we were having our lunch under the statue uh, of um, Jonah, and uh, the cell phone rang and someone said, uh, Jonah Lomu has passed away. Mm. And so we were so shocked at it kind of knocked us for six and the lunch didn't drag on as men's uh, lunchtime lunches sometimes do. We all sort of felt flat and, um, and drifted away. Uh, it, it is terribly tragic uh, and with the advantage I suppose of a few days uh, looking back, it's almost like Jonah was trying to cram everything into his all too short life. Uh, he had tremendous uh, health issues, as we all know, and yet that didn't stop him from racing, charging at every opportunity to um, to be involved in life and to travel. I saw him uh, and had a nice conversation with him uh, in Hong Kong at the Sevens this year. And then, of course, he was charging around the Rugby World Cup uh, as though he was 100% healthy and fit, which we perhaps now know was not the case. Uh, well, um, I called him the most sensational rugby player uh, I'd ever seen play the game. And it's been my good fortune to make a career out of watching rugby, following the bouncing ball and all those uh, corny expressions. And I never saw anyone quite so sensational when he was at his very best. So those are the memories I'll have him, of him. Um, and in particular, of course, of the famous game, um, against England in the, in the semi-finals of the World Cup in 1995 when he scored those four tries. It was a, a day where uh, his life changed and it was a day when my life changed too because the commentary that uh, was done that day has sort of now attached me to the Jonah story. So uh, in that regard, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, we're stuck together now for a while. The Richard McCaw thing um, has been a source of great debate uh, in my life. I've got some very good friends who have kind of charged me over the years of not being totally uh, uh, full of adulation and admiration for McCaw, which is not quite right. Um, it, it, I was critical of McCaw as a young captain, and I believe he botched the captaincy of the World Cup in, in 2007. I thought that... Uh, his captaincy was naive in the game against France at Cardiff, and so I said so. Uh, but I soon learned that uh, you can't be critical of uh, McCaw, and especially as that the image mm. and the brand has increased with the added uh, Rugby World Cup wins in recent times. So, of course, I now believe uh, that he uh, is a great leader of men. I think we've had better open side flankers than uh, than McCaw. Uh, I've been watching the replays of the 1995 World Cup and have been reinforced, it's been reinforced to me how great Josh Cronfell was in that team as an open side flanker, a genuine running open side flanker. We know how great uh, Michael Jones was uh, back even earlier than that. McCaw played a different type of uh, open side game, but McCaw's great advantage which has come through in recent times and should be uh, celebrated and admired to the very highest level is that of leadership. Mm -hmm. Something happens in the dressing room <coughs> with the doors shut that the rest of us outside don't see and that's his ability to motivate his players to go onto the field match after match after match and follow him into battle. And he leads from the front uh, and the words that he speaks to the players in the dressing room motivates them enough to follow him as well. So in that regard, uh, he's one of our greats. He also, of course, deserves to be remembered as one of our cup-lifting greats because he lifted up 
the Rugby World Cup uh, twice, and how many times did he lift up the Bledisloe Cup? Any number of times. So uh, he he he's, he deserves the highest praise. Joe Nalongu changed the way the game was played worldwide because previously big guys always played in the forwards, and when Jonah came along, he was big but athletic, and so the coaches of the time recognised that, and they said, "No, you're not going into the forwards. We want you on the wing. We want you to. We want to use your power and your speed and your agility and talent mm. uh, on the wing." So he changed the way the world game was played. A lot of the teams at the World Cup now have got a Jonah Lomu on the, on the wing. Um, McCaw, I don't know if he changed the way the game was played in the world, but two guys, Meads and Lomu, did.